Right now, Webflow forms have three problems. Number one, the spam protection is not that great. Number two, there are some concerns regarding GDPR compliance because the form data is sent to the United States. And number three, the email notifications that we receive when someone submits a form, they don't look that great. And to solve these problems, today I'm going to show you a tool called FormSpark and a complementary spam protection service called BotPoison. And FormSpark is an external service that will handle your Webflow form submissions. And the great thing about FormSpark is that it works silently in the background. So your website visitors, they will not notice a difference. And also for you as a Webflow developer, not that much will change. You can still style the form like you're used to inside of Webflow. You can edit the individual fields, fields and you can also access the success and error states of the field. The only thing that will be different is the processing of the data in the background will no longer be done by Webflow, but we will kind of offload it to this external service called FormSpark, which has much better spam protection, is regarded to be more compliant with GDPR, and also has much better looking email notifications. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up the integration. It is super easy, so let's get started. Okay, right here, I have a super basic demo set up inside of Webflow with a form. And before we start with the integration, we have to do a little bit of preparation. So um, if I click on a field, for example, this company field, you can see that the name of this field inside of the text field settings is called company, which is a useful and descriptive name. So make sure that all of your fields have these useful and descriptive names in the field settings, because if you use something uh, generic like field one or field two, this is not good as later inside of FormSpark, these field names will be used to display the data, the form data that has been submitted. Once you've done that, once you've made sure that all of your fields have a descriptive name, then you can go to the website FormSpark, formspark.io and create a free account. Just click on the blue button, try it free. And then you have to, have to enter your email address inside of this field uh, and click create. The cool thing about FormSpark is it doesn't use a password. So you just will receive a signup link inside of your email account and the sign up email looks like this. And here you can just click the, the blue button, click here to sign in. And now your account has been created and uh, there's nothing else that you have to do for the account setup. That's what I call a frictionless sign up process. So right here we are in the dashboard and before I show you how to create a form, I want to say a few words about um, about FormSpark and especially the pricing model. FormSpark uh, is not a subscription service, which is great. We have enough of those already. Um, with FormSpark, everybody that signs up will receive 250 free form submissions. And once you run out of these form submissions, you have to purchase a package of submissions. Uh, well, that basically means that if you receive one form submission per day, this will last you almost eight or nine months. Once you've run out of submissions, you have to go to purchase submissions and they have quite an affordable pricing. You can buy 50,000 submissions for a one-time payment of $25. For the average website that receives about five to 10 submissions per day, this will last you like 10 to 20 years until you would have to buy uh, a refill package. So I think that's a great and fair pricing model um, that FormSpark uses. Also, FormSpark is a European company with servers in the European Union. And as of right now, this is regarded to be uh, a lot better for GDPR. And you can read about that uh, on your own uh, on the FormSpark website. Let's create our first form. We can do that by clicking the green button, create your first form. Then we can give the form a name. So make sure that this is something descriptive so that you know which website this belongs to. I'm going to call this uh, FormSpark tutorial. And I usually put the name of the website in parentheses that I know exactly what this form is all about. If you want, you can create a nice description and then you have to choose the technology. In our case, this is Webflow. So I click on it and then click create. And now the form has been created and we're inside 
uh, the form dashboard. I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough. The first tab is the submissions tab. Later on, this is the place where we will see all of the form submissions with the form data and information. The second tab is the analytics tab where we will find the form statistics. So how many submissions you received per day or per week and stuff like that. The next tab is called the exports tab. Here you can export your form data as CSV or JSON if that is relevant for you. Uh, the next tab is the settings tab, which we're going to take a very deep look uh, in a few moments. And the last tab is called the how to tab. This is uh, just a tab with general information, not too relevant for us, but there's one thing that we absolutely need from this tab, and this is the URL that you can see right here. So we have to copy this link by clicking this copy icon and go back to Webflow and select the form that we want to connect to FormSpark. You can just click on any field inside of the form. And here, inside of the form settings where it says action, we have to paste this URL as our action URL. And then set the method from get to post. And now we've shown this Webflow form where it should send the data to. This is what this link is all about. Let's go back to FormSpark and take a detailed look at the settings tab. Here inside of the settings tab, you can change the name of the form if you want, you can change your description, and you can also uh, decide who will receive the email notifications with the form data whenever your form is submitted. By default, this will be filled out with the account email, um, but you can also remove this email and type in a different email, for example, the email of your client, or you could even type in multiple emails if multiple people should receive a notification whenever the form is submitted. The next setting, the email threading, I have never touched that. I just leave it at the default. Same for the email notification template. Uh, the webhook URL, you can use that if you want to do some automations uh, or some integrations. The same with the Zapier key, if you want to connect Zapier to form Spark. You could even connect the Slack channel if you want to. The custom honeypot, I'm going to walk you through that a little later. And the last field, and also the most important field, is called spam protection. See, the great thing about FormSpark is that it uses some advanced spam analysis tool in the background, and this works out of the box without you having to do any setup. But on top of that, uh, FormSpark offers a few options, a few methods for additional spam protection. So we have bot poison, which we are going to set up in a few moments. Then we have Google reCAPTCHA, uh, HCAPTCHA, which is a more private, privacy focused Google reCAPTCHA. And we have Turnstile, which is basically Cloudflare's Google reCAPTCHA. But we are going to use bot poison today. And the reason for that is bot poison does not get in the way of your user. So your user will not notice that bot poison is working in the background and is not going to be annoying like all of these other CAPTCHA options where uh, users have to click this I'm not a robot field and then they have to click 10 fields and decide which image has a traffic light on it. You all, you all know that, which is very annoying. And bot poison doesn't have all of that. It works silently in the background without much um, problems and without much annoyance. When you select bot poison, you have to uh, enter a bot poison secret key. Now, where do we get that secret key from? Well, you just go to the website botpoison.com. This website uh, belongs to the same company as FormSpark. So there, this is one company that provides these two services. And um, if we take a look at the pricing, you can see that uh, Bot Poison offers 250 submissions or 250 bot verifications for free, but every month. So for most people or a lot of people that are watching this, you are never going to have to pay for Bot Poison, at least with the current payment, payment and pricing plan. And if you need more submissions and more bot verifications per month, it's also quite affordable with $2 per month. So click on Stop Spam Now and enter your uh, email address. I'm going to type in my email address for this tutorial and click on sign in. And Bot Poison also has a super frictionless signup process. You just enter your email address, go to your email account, open the welcome email, 
click the sign up link and boom, your account is already set up. I just love this frictionless sign up process. To create a secret and public key for Bot Poison, we have to click on this button, create configuration. Um, and then we have to type in a name. Usually I just take, I just copy the name of this form that I want to connect Bot Poison to. Um, and paste this in as the configuration name, click on create. And now we have these two keys, public and secret key. Let's start with the secret key. We have to copy that, go back to form spark. And now where it says bot poison secret key, we have to paste that and click on save. And now bot poison is set up for this form. The next thing we have to do is we have to enter some JavaScript on our Webflow site. Now, don't worry, this is, you don't have to write the JavaScript yourself. FormSpark already provides that. So you click on guide up here at the top, and this will take you to the site documentation.formspark.io. And here you just type in, uh, type in Webflow, and there's only one result. You click on that. And on this page, you have two code snippets. We need the second one where it says with bot poison. And we copy this entire code snippet, go to the page setting where the form is located, click on settings and paste this code into the uh, footer code section. So before the closing body tag, what this code does, it activates the form spark functionality so that it works exactly like a native Webflow form. With this code, you can still use your uh, error and success state that Webflow offers and the, the end user, the website visitor, will not notice that the form processing is offloaded to a different service. So it's quite a seamless user experience as well, which is great. Uh, if we take a look at this code, you can see here it says your public key uh, inside of the bot poison, poison configuration. This is obviously a placeholder, so we have to go to our bot poison account and this time copy our public key and go back to Webflow and paste it in right here. Make sure when you paste it in that you don't delete these double quotes uh, in front and in the back of this string because otherwise you're going to break the code and it's not going to work anymore. Click on save then click on publish. And now our basic setup is complete. So let's open the website and test this. I'm going to type in my name. My name is Mike, Mike's company, paste in my email address. And what type of work am I looking for? Just select something random here. Um, my message, I'm going to type out a little bit of placeholder text, and then I'm going to send the message. Submit the form. And now you can see, thank you, your submission has been received. And uh, what's also important to notice, this is the default Webflow uh, success state. And you could style it however you want. That's what I was referring to in the beginning when I said the website visitor will not notice a difference. And let's take a look in my email account. You can see that I have received this uh, notification email with this nice and clean table, new submission. The name is Mike, company, Mike's company, email, this weird email for the tutorials. I want Webflow development. I want SEO optimization. I want a monthly partnership. And this is my very sophisticated message. If we go to the FormSpark dashboard, to the form itself, you can see inside of the submissions tab, this form data is also now visible and we can take a look at it here. And just to make sure everything is set up 100% correctly, I also want to check bot poison. So I'm going to reload the bot poison page. And now inside of this graph, you can see that there is now an entry 17th of February, which is today, there has been a successful and a solved uh, bot verification. So the bot poison setup is working as well. Okay, with this setup that we just configured, we already have a great protection against spam bots. But there's one additional technique that we can use to improve our spam protection. And this technique is called the honeypot technique. And uh, by the way, 
just as a little side note is if anything of this is too complicated for you or you don't want to do this setup yourself or you need help with it then you can go to my website mikepecha.com i offer these types of integrations as a service and uh, then you can just contact me on my website and i can help you with that okay so let's talk about the honeypot technique the honeypot technique involves a so-called honeypot field a honeypot field is a field that we add to our form that is only visible to robots, to spam bots, but not visible to humans. And thus, a human cannot fill out this form because a human will not see it. But because of the way a robot, a spam bot, reads an HTML page, this robot will see the form and in a lot of cases will actually fill out this form. So we know that whenever this honeypot field has been filled out, that it must have been a spam bot and we can just delete the, the form submission and can ignore it. And in fact, that's what FormSpark does for us automatically in the background without us having to do anything. To enable this honeypot functionality, mm, we have to just do a, a little bit of setup. We have to go to the settings tab of the form again, then scroll down the page where it says custom honeypot. And here you can, or you have to choose a name for the honeypot field. You can type in whatever you want. You can choose some random letters or you can type in the name of your cat. It's not really that important because the field will be hidden anyway. Just make sure that you don't call it honeypot because a lot of spam bots actually check if the name of a field is honeypot. And uh, if that is the case, they will ignore it and find a way around it. So make sure it's not called honeypot. I'm just going to call it custom dash field. But as I said, it is not that important. Uh, then we click save. Once you've saved the name of the custom honeypot, you have to click on guide again up here. And this will take us to the documentation of FormSpark. Here you have to search again for honeypot and then select the second result where it says spam protection custom honeypot. And here we have to copy the code but important, not the entire code, only this first input field right here. This is what we have to copy. So I copy it, go back to Webflow, select uh, the form and add an HTML embed. To do that, I'm going to use the quick finder with command K or, or control K uh, on Windows, command K on Mac and type in embed and then I can add the embed to the page. Here you just paste the, this input field and uh, replace the name uh, with the name that we just configured inside of the form settings. In my case, this was, was custom-field. Click save and close. And now if we preview it, the field is not visible. And that's exactly the point. The field is not visible to humans and thus humans cannot fill it out but a robot can see it. And if they fill it out, they will automatically be detected and FormSpark will categorize the submission as spam. One more thing that I have to mention here uh, regarding the honeypot fields is that while this is a nice additional spam protection, especially against very simple spam bots, um, you shouldn't use this as a sole and as your only spam protection method because a lot of bots are quite advanced and will be able to detect such a honeypot field. But as an additional layer of security uh, on top of the other configuration that I showed you today, this is a really nice setup. I'm going to put a link uh, to the clonable of this demo page inside of the video description so you can uh, clone it inside your own Webflow account and play around with this a little bit. And if you're interested in more Webflow form tutorial, you can check out this playlist that I created about Webflow forms. And if you need someone to help you with these kinds, kinds of Webflow setups, then go to my website, mikepecha.com and contact me. Have a nice day 